Quarantine vlog. Push up fishy. As I fix my Bad underwear. Eggs. Here, we're gonna. Excuse me. <laughs> My shoes are from Goodwill. You have <laughs> shoes from Goodwill. Oh, have you watched Midnight Gospel? That show is so good. I love that show. That like hit, that like totally It literally that, like, hits so hard. So hard. <laughs> okay. Based off of that show, I want to do like car vlogs, but more of like, we have like those podcast type of conversations but in because everyone feels more comfortable having those conversations like driving around yeah and i would just like set my phone up and we would like talk about mortality or if you need a drug expert i can be your drug yeah, expert we could talk about drugs or we could talk about like literally anything like our future plans aspirations like theories about the universe and then i'd make them into youtube videos and people could just like listen to us talk in a car i think the reason why i liked on like on the topic of drugs the reason why i liked midnight gospel so much because in the first episode they addressed like marijuana and everything mm -hmm. and they were talking about how like when you take enough drugs like they yeah. will bring out parts of you that you don't want to see exactly and that's what happened to me that one day where like it brought out a fear in me that i never knew that i had that brought a <laughs> bad fear in me too <laughs> yeah it brought out a lot of shit that day but like now that I think about it, like, I don't have, I can just, I could say it, like, I don't have a fear of drugs, but, like, the fear of me not being in control. Yeah, not being in control, that's one of them. I now have a fear of death. It's so prominent now, because, like, you know, everyone knows, like, we're, like, everyone says, is, like, we're all gonna die. Like, we are gonna die someday, but, like, do you ever, like, actually sit down and think about it? Do you ever, like, sit there and think, like, where am I gonna go when I no longer exist? So, yes, <laughs> um, it's normally when I'm on drugs, <laughs> <laughs> and I really, I don't, I don't really believe, like, I don't know, my beliefs are kind of like a, like a jumbled up mess of like eight other different religions. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I really just, so like, I believe in reincarnation, I believe like in science class, you're told there's only a limited amount of atoms in the universe. You can never create or destroy more mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the same thing with souls so I think like all of life isn't like it's like kind of connected but also like not really it's connected in the fact that like I'm going to die and I don't know my soul is going to leave my body and become a new being mm -hmm. like that was my it is my soul right now but it wasn't my soul in my past life. It was whoever my past life was. It was their soul. Mm -hmm. And so your soul continues on. You as yourself aren't like, it's not like I get reincarnated as fox and I rem like, I'm me, but as a fox, like that's mm -hmm. not what's going on. Your soul is just like reduce, reuse, recycled. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the scheme of things. I get that too, because like, when you think about it, all like oxygen molecules, that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're all like breathing in the same molecules and they're all like coming back and that's the recycling yeah. aspect. And then I also think about like, I play on the idea that like, you literally lose a certain amount of weight once you die. Cause I feel like that's your soul leaving your body. Yeah. No, yeah. But like, I got into like this thing, it was on like TikTok or something. Like people like, oh, I, I, like my heart stopped beating for like two minutes or something the and here are the, those are fakes so. yeah here are the images that i saw and i was looking at them and like those everyone, are clout chasers yeah but like they're all showing the same images and i'm like hmm so in my thought process i'm like if everyone like if people are actually being truthful about this i feel like i do have like a light view of purgatory which is like that waiting area before you go to like no i definitely believe there's some sort of waiting area yeah. i don't think it's like some like god that judges you i think there's an entity that like does things but i think yeah. it's like 
like an like think of like a thermometer you have like an internal like thermometer mm -hmm. in your soul yeah and that is what like that's how it's decided what you are reincarnated into so like your own what you deem as morally right and wrong that's how your ticker goes so like you're either good or you're bad but it's like on a scale obviously but like it's not one person's definition it's your definition so right. like serial killers they may say they don't care and they don't care about morals but they know they know that killing people is morally wrong and they won't it the majority of them won't admit like ted bundy thought he was the shit and he was just <laughs> like i killed those people and i'm dope but he knew i know for a fact like i don't have facts to back it up but i know for a fact he was like sitting in his jail cell at least once so we like, th like that might have like not i been wish a good idea. i <laughs> didn't kill those people yeah like everyone puts on a face to seem like a dope dude but like no one wants to be a bad person and I think that's interesting because like once you get to that waiting room, the reason why people in our lifetime remember it is because your soul wasn't ready to move on at that point. Mm -hmm. Like you were literally being like revived while you were in that waiting room. And I think like once you're in your next life, you don't remember what that waiting room was. Yeah. But I think like after that one experience that we both had, um, <laughs> I have come to a point where like it's a gray area where I'm comfortable with the idea of death. I know it's going to happen, but what scares me is that, like, I wish I knew where, like, I was going when you get to that death point. Like, I wish, like, there's so many, like, the reason why I took a world religions class was because, like, I wanted to know what people's views were on the afterlife. And I'm going through all of these different religions, and they all kind of believe in the same thing, like some form of reincarnation or a heaven or hell. Like it's, it's one of the two, but then like everyone has their own idea and concept of that heaven and hell. And I'm like, well, like if someone told me like, it's a, Christians are the easiest ones. If someone said like, oh, I'm Christian, we're gonna go to heaven. This is what heaven looks like. And I'm like, okay, well, have you been there? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. do you actually know what that looks like? are you sure that place exists and listen a lot of the a lot of the things that people when they die and they're like i saw a bright light or mm -hmm. like like that could there's science that proves that that could honestly be just like the light on the operating table oh yeah like, like you like bit, like you flow back to consciousness and all you see is a bright light mm -hmm. and like voices and disembodied voices and that's like you on an operating table. yeah i watched a shane dawson conspiracy video and he was talking that's about... where you should get all of your reliable information <laughs> i know but he was talking about like the process a body goes through when they're experienced like when they're going through death mm -hmm. and like the white light is like basically like nerves are shutting off in your brain yeah so like it's obviously it's now moved towards your eyes and you see that white light but that's literally just like science like your body's turning off yeah but like there's also like when people are like oh i saw like my deceased husband for example when a leaf. I, thought <laughs> I saw someone in a neon green shirt but it's a leaf <laughs> like when they say that it's just like your brain is like running through the memories that it's now getting rid of yeah and it's resurfacing and i was talking to my mom about that in a subway and she <laughs> she was telling me she was like like they see that white light they see these people they're going to heaven and i'm like yeah but also like your brain is shutting down so like i really don't know if it's your brain shutting down or if it's actually you going to like either that waiting room or that better place but here's the thing you could always just like combine the two beliefs like christians say you either go to heaven or you go to hell for the rest of eternity mm -hmm. well if you believe like i do that there's a limited amount of souls at some point your soul is going to be needed again yeah so maybe you go there for like a certain amount of time and like get your punishment or get your reward and then you're like re yeah like after a certain amount of time based on whoever's running that place um <laughs> they're like okay package shipped and then back yeah. to another body and i don't e i don't even know like i don't even know man like i just think like i don't i don't see it as like a person i see it as just like an entity like really it's just like the universe like yeah the, like i think i don't like science hasn't proved anything so i feel like there has to be some 
entity some power even if it is just the universe that like started the universe yeah something something had to get the ball rolling yeah and i think that something like kicked the ball rolling but i don't believe that there's an like an entity that's like looking down and judging my every action like i believe in karma oh yeah i'm very agnostic about the idea of god because um i grew up as catholic so i'm kind of trained to not disrespect him so I don't say that he exists, nor that he doesn't exist. I, I, when people ask me what I am, I tell them I'm agnostic. Yeah, because, like, it makes me, like, I personally feel uncomfortable saying that, like, this God doesn't exist, because I'm like, ah, shit, like, don't do Because we don't know. Like, our whole argument is based on the fact that nobody knows. So yeah. we can't say it doesn't exist. We just say that there hasn't enough proof that I feel like that yeah. is something that I'm going to devote my life to. And I know, like, there's, like, Catholic Christians, you know, people right. who like they are Christian, but they don't like they don't that they don't devote their life to it. They just believe in a God and they like pray mm-hmm. to them every once in a while. And I totally could be one of those, but I just like it's one of those things. It's just one of those <laughs> things. I just don't. I just feel like nothing has proven it. Yeah, like me. that's also like my idea with heaven and hell. Like, have you been there? Like, do you? It's Are you bugs. sure? Sorry. I'm just trying to get bugs. <laughs> what was I thinking about? Uh, oh! Playing on the idea of ghosts. I love ghosts. Because I have had experiences with, with ghosts before. And basically what it was, was like, this was in like my first house. My mom, dad, and I experienced them, but my sister didn't. I don't know why. But like, basically, I would see like, either people or... Like, they came to me as actual people. Like, I remember one time I was doing laundry, and I walked, like, there was this hallway. Well, that makes sense. They don't, like, no one wants to look like a... Yeah, right. I was, like, there was a hallway down to my parents' bedroom, and I was walking across that hallway to my bedroom, and I had, like, a basket of laundry. And I, like, glanced into my parents' bedroom, and there was someone sleeping on, like, the pull-out chair. And I walked in my bedroom, and I was like, what? And then I pulled back and then no one was in the chair. Then there's also the one time I was brushing my teeth and I was looking in the mirror because the mirror reflected like the staircase. So like I was brushing my teeth and looking in the mirror and in that reflection I saw someone, like a cloaked person walking down my stairs. And I was like, what? And then of course like no one's there. And then there was that one ghost that my mom and I encountered who would slam doors on our realtor. I think his name is like John or David or something. So here's what I'm saying. Like, if there is some sort of waiting room, they're probably getting caught up somewhere. I think like, it's. I yeah. think ghosts are people who are caught maybe, in between maybe, here and the waiting room. But here's also what I think. Maybe they have a choice. Because you know how he said maybe if you like combine the two, say you mm-hmm. do get reincarnated, but you spend some time in like heaven or hell or like yeah. good place, bad place. Um, what if you have like the choice right like you could be here or you could be stuck or maybe it's just like a thing like maybe there is no bad place they just like sent them to wander the earth yeah and like like, reflection time yeah (laughs) but some ghosts take that reflection time and only get angry about it because they're like terrible people and Mm -hmm. now they're ghosts and they're terrible ghosts but some ghosts take that reflection time and they just like want to be around people so maybe that's why you see them like walking around your house they don't mean any harm yeah like the ones in my house didn't mean any harm except for except for jonathan john slash david i don't remember what his name was but like he would always do this to our realtor he would he would slam the doors and like even though there's no draft there's no way you could slam a door without like someone pushing it he would slam doors on our realtor when we were moving out he probably got mad that we were leaving that makes sense if he didn't do anything until you left yeah Loved him though. He was funny. Like we, this was so funny. We came home one day, and we heard the door slam. And we were like, "Fuck, Jonathan!" And then I think her name was Kathy or something. She was like, "What the fuck?" Because she was like on the other side of the door because he slammed the door right on Kathy. Because she was in like my parents' bedroom. But I do remember like my mom and dad also experienced it. And when there's this one experience between my mom and dad, where my dad was doing something in the yard and he was like on his knees, and someone was like like someone the ghost was like touching his leg and my mom could see it from the inside and then dad came in he was like oh there's like so much burning on my leg and my mom was like well someone was touching your leg and then they went away 
Why didn't, like, oh, why was that not, like, yelled? Like, if I, <laughs> like, if I was just, like, inside, like, doing whatever the fuck I'm doing, and then, like, I see a ghost is just, like, tugging on my hubby, <laughs> I would not be, like, oh, like, I wonder what's going on. I'd be, like, like, what like, I, who the fuck is that? Like, what's that call my husband? <laughs> he just returned up for, for war. I don't know, but, like, I remember the, the interaction between, like, human and ghost is a feeling of burning for my parents. Which, like, they really did nothing about. I don't know why. But... Ghostbusters! Yeah! But, like, I think the existence of ghosts is just, like, they're stuck between, like, that waiting room yeah. and from when they died. Because some people, like, they aren't bad or good. They're just, like... They're just, like, neutral. Like, some people are neutral people, and maybe mm -hmm. those are the ones that, like just get like reflection time on earth because earth can either be a good thing or a bad thing however you make it so that could just be all the neutrals right yeah all the people who just like went through life and did not really do anything that's probably why there's so many little kid spirits because little kids are probably neutral yeah and they're probably not ready to go anywhere at that time yeah because like they literally just started living so <laughs> yeah their souls hadn't like matured to an age where they I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I we know. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not going to pretend like we know. We're just spouting out ideas that yeah. we think could be possibility. But like in I the think middle the, of the woods. <laughs> in the middle of the woods. I think the reason why I have such a fear towards the idea of dying is because like one there's no solid proof or evidence that like there is a place that we're going or there is a form of reincarnation. No one actually knows. That scares the shit out of me. Also the fact that like coming to terms with the fact that like your body is not immortal and that your existence is going to end one day that freaks the shit out of me oh, because yeah. like it's different because like you see people dying every day but you're like that's not me it's i god i'm gonna butcher this but there's this <laughs> quote that i saw on a tv show and it was really good but i like i remember <laughs> half of it so i'm gonna try and tell it to you in a profound way so just pretend you're like you're this is, this is great. This is great. Way, okay? <laughs> Pretend. Okay? Yes. Uh, no matter how long you've walked the earth, when death comes calling, it is always too soon. It always feels too soon. I'm, except for those people who are, are like, it's my time. I'm gonna, I don't understand those people. But those are people who have lived past. Yeah, who have like come to some sort of fulfillment. Like those, those are the old people who are like 120 and they're like, right, I'm yeah. ready. Like they're I like, have this is nothing it. <laughs> else I can do. I'm ready to die. I think maybe, it's the same bikers. Maybe we should just go. We've been here for 43 minutes. We could go. Let's wrap it up. Okay. That's our story. We can put this away now. <laughs>